Good morning, my name is David Rogers and we're just about to continue with our next session of cruise space on the Massey Shore, our story of the boat and its history. So today as the weather's improved we've, we've moved outside and we're going to actually look at the construction of the boat. When people come onto the boat they, uh, the affinity is, is towards a, a narrow boat or something that uh, the way the vessel's designed. So she's actually 78 feet long 13 foot 6 wide and has a very shallow depth or draft of 3 foot 9 inches and those were critical things that the fire brigade wanted in, in their fire boats in order for them to operate on the Thames but also that the boats could come off the Thames and be operated on the Lee navigation or various other tributaries of the Thames so it had to be very low uh, in the water but it also had to be able to fit into the locks they would have to go into to come off the River Thames and this vessel would be able to do that and similarly um, it's the width of the vessel itself um, would be appropriate to allow the fire kit to be operated but still for the vessel to be going through the locks etc and certainly in its, its career it did come off the Thames and was seen at various uh, fires um, particularly on the, in the, on the Grand Union and on the River Lee. Where we're looking is the, the bow of the vessel and during the actual design uh, features in the, in the late 1920s when a new fire boat was, was being discussed, um, there were some thoughts about improvements that could be made from the earlier fire boats. And one of those was actually in the hull design and particularly at the bow area. Now in the actual specifications that were put, to the, um, put out for tender, one of the important features was this shape. And this was like a destroyer. If you see any of the wartime films, you'll see uh, boats of the period had this very raking bow, very sharp nose to it, long, that would allow the boat to be pushed through the water at good speed um, and keeping some stability. So when the actual design was published and it went out to tender, um, J. Samuel Whites, who were the actual successful company from Cows on the Isle of Wight, they spent uh, over six weeks at, down at Teddington, um, where they have the um, large tanks that are available to test the uh, dynamics and designs of various vessels. And they spent, I say, six weeks, quite a considerable amount of money as well, improving this design. Because what the fire brigade wanted was a vessel that um, could go through the water up to 12 knots um, with the power configuration that they decided upon, which was Glenifer engines, and also would be able to be low enough to go under all the bridges on the Thames um, throughout the various states of tide. So there were some um, various pieces that had to be brought in. The other thing was they wanted a riveted hull. At this particular time, and Massey Shore was being built on the Isle of Wight, she was one of the last vessels to actually feature a, a riveted hull uh, construction. After that it went to the uh, welding which we, we know today. 